My name is Liam Byrne and I'm a consultant trichologist and member of the Institute of Trichology here at Robert Byrne Hairdressing. I'd like to welcome you to my first vlog and today I'm going to deal with a subject that I feel is very, very important. It's a condition called frontal fibrosing alopecia and it's a condition that has grown exponentially over the last number of years. The exact cause of frontal fibrosing alopecia is unknown, but what is known is that the immune system attacks the hair follicles. What causes this is that uh, antigen cells or little tiny molecules that the immune system recognizes uh, causes lymphocytes or white blood cells to attack the upper part of the hair follicle. This causes destruction of the hair follicle and thus the hair can't grow back again. Um, there is, as I said before, also uh, a hormonal aspect to it, and we'll come to that later on. The other um, feature of frontal fibrosing alopecia is also the loss of the ostea, or the openings of the hair follicles, and thus, with this condition, the hair can't grow back. With this condition, it's very, very early days yet, but certainly it is known that, say, sisters um, in the same family or relations in the same family uh, suffer frontal fibrosing alopecia. So it's not conclusive, but certainly there seems to be a genetic aspect to it, as well as an environmental aspect to it. Frontal fibrosing alopecia often the first place that you notice it is your eyebrows. And again, I can't emphasize enough that if you notice changes in your eyebrows, that you come to see a trichologist or your GP. So typically, the first time people really become aware of this condition is when they notice um, their hairline receding back. You also notice a change in the color between the skin on your forehead and the skin on your scalp and you can also very often see very tiny blood vessels. What you also tend to see is uh, scaling around the hair follicle, which is called perifollicular uh, scaling, and also maybe redness, which is called perifollicular erythema. You can also see lonely hairs or isolated hairs that are, are kind of on their own away from the rest of the hair. And what you also can see is the hairline receding back, not just on your forehead, but also above the ears and behind the ears and into the back of your head in an area called the occipital area. Um, very often also people can notice that they have itching, burning or even a painful scalp before they even notice any hair loss occurring. One way to be certain is to get a biopsy and when I see people with frontal fibrosing alopecia I will generally recommend that they go to see a dermatologist so this can be done just to confirm the diagnosis. If you notice changes in your eyebrows or you notice that your front hairline has started to recede and you're worried about it and you'd like to speak to somebody I'm always available here at Robert Byrne Hairdressing for a confidential consultation.